Hey, it's me, the Rhino, for Survival Skills 101. Boy, am I glad to see you. Anyway, I'm going to talk to you today about what happens when you're lost in the woods. You know, every year hundreds of people get lost in our national forests and rescue workers have to come and find them. Now this doesn't have to be if they would just take some simple precautions and preparations before they go out. Here's what I'm talking about. Prepare not to get lost. Now, I have a GPS locator right here or a satellite locator that I can go out and I can uh, text home and it gives my exact location. I take this hiking, backpacking, car camping, I take it everywhere and I'm out uh, in, the, in some of the deepest places in Idaho uh, and people know exactly where I am at all times. But some people don't want to spend the money on the satellite locator. If you're interested in this, I'm including a video. Uh, I have this on my YouTube channel. If you don't have a satellite locator, then it's very important that you text somebody where you're going, write it on a piece of paper, leave it on your desk at home. That way, if you do get lost, rescue workers at least have a starting place to come and find you. What I also did when I didn't have my satellite locator was I would leave something in the car, like a, a piece of paper with directions about where my destination is and where I'm going. So that, made it, that would make it easier for somebody to find me uh, if they found my vehicle. The second thing you need to do is you need to have a day pack. A day pack is very important if you're going hiking, camping, uh, spending any time out in the woods, you need to bring your day pack with you. Daypack has essential survival necessities that you can use if you do get lost. I have a video of that as well on survival skills. I want you to check that out. It's really informative. Okay, if you don't have a satellite locator, it's always best that you go out with a friend. I don't care if it's hiking or camping or whatever. Having friends with you is very good, especially if you're not an experienced woodsman. If you are with a friend and you happen to get lost from each other and you have your day pack with you, all you need to do is reach in and if you both have whistles, you can sit and whistle and what it'll do is you can hone in on each other where you're at. Very important to have a whistle. It's not a joke. It's something that's awesome and you need to have this. Okay, so you do get lost. Uh, you don't have your day pack with you. You're... Uh, out in the middle of nowhere and you're looking around and you lost sight of the trail, you can't find where your camp is, uh, and things are looking kind of bleak. The first thing you need to do is don't panic. Don't freak out. That is the absolute worst thing you can do. I know you're going to be embarrassed if you get lost and people have to come and find you. That's the least of your worries. Right now, you don't need to panic. I always use the acronym STOP. Sit down think, orient yourself, and then plan and prepare. Stop. When you do that, things start to become more calm and more easy going for you to handle this problem. So what are you going to do? Well, first of all, uh, depending on where you're at and what time it is, you have two choices. You can keep walking if you want to, or you can stay in place and hunker down until somebody finds you. This is a decision that you need to make. Uh, a lot of people say, just stay where you're at. Someone will come look for you. Uh, well, it really all depends. Here's what I would suggest to you. If it's getting close tonight, you need to hunker down. Uh, light a fire if you can. I always build a shelter first, especially if it's going to be cold. The second thing I do is I go uh, within the general vicinity and look for some water if I didn't bring any with me. So you made the decision that you're going to walk instead of hunkering down. Hunkering down has its benefits. Uh, having people uh, being able to locate you and you're not moving around playing hide and seek with them is very important, but you made the decision that you're going to go walk. At least you can find out, if you don't have a compass or anything like that, which is, nor which is north, south, east, and west. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But you start to go. The, the best thing you should do is if you're walking, try to find a river. If you find a river, uh, as you walk, it's pretty much going to lead to a house sometime. So finding a river going downhill, very important. You can also go uphill if you want to and go to the top of a mountain or a hill somewhere. 
Uh, why? Because maybe you could get cell phone reception from up there. I am surprised at how often I can get cell phone reception uh, out in the wilderness. Uh, and then I'm surprised at how often I can't get it either. So you go up to the top of the mountain, you could get cell phone reception. You can also, on top of the mountain or hill, look and see uh, just exactly where things are, where that river is if you can't find it from where you're at. So you can either go up or you can go down, but you need to be thinking straight and not just wander around. Okay, so you're lost out in the woods. You don't have your compass GPS. How do you find out north, south, east, and west? Well, east and west is pretty easy because the sun comes up in the east and goes down in the west. So all you have to do is look at the sun. North and south can be a little bit more difficult. So what I would suggest to you is look for moss on trees. Now you've heard that before, that moss grows on the north side of trees. That's true and that's false. Moss can grow on the east side, the south side of the tree, but typically it will grow on the north side. So what I would suggest to you is when you're looking at trees that you take a sample of all the trees around there and where most of the moss is on that side of the trees, that's probably a good bet that that's going to be north. So here's some things to help you so you don't get lost. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you have your GPS unit and a compass with you. Uh, always have two things because the GPS unit batteries could go down uh, and you're going to you know, have your compass to, to back yourself up. I always look around and I look at mountains and hills and I orient myself to those mountains and the hills. No matter where I'm at, I can look back at that hill with a unique feature on it and say, okay, that's over here and I can start walking to that if I need to as well. One more thing you should do is always look behind you. As you're walking, look back uh, and see where you came from. That way when you go back, the, when you come back the way you went, you'll at least see something familiar. Nothing is worse than not looking back and then you turn around to come back and you can't recognize which way to go. I want to talk a little bit more about hunkering down in place. You've made the decision that you're going to sit and wait for rescuers to come and get you. Now, I understand that you're going to probably feel embarrassed, but you know what? That's the least of your worries. Understand how this is going to work. They're going to find your last location because you told somebody, or they're going to find your car, and they're going to start the search from there. And what happens is the rescue is start out, and they work a grid pattern all the way to you. You'll probably hear them coming after a while. If you have a fire built up, that would certainly help matters out. Now, they are going to keep looking for you for weeks if they have to, so don't give up hope. You're out there, they will come and find you. That's what they do. We just had a case in Idaho where a, a guy was going back to college and he, he drove his car off of a side of a, into a gully uh, out, in the, out in the forest and he, his car was completely covered up by bushes. Uh, it took him a week to find him only because he said he was going to this place and they figured it out by the roads and it took him about a week. I promise you, if you want to be found, it probably won't be a week if you told somebody where you're going. So just be prepared uh, and, and make sure that you are comfortable in the location that you're in. Now, how do you get comfortable? Again, I build a shelter. That's the first thing I do, especially if it's getting nighttime. Because if it's cold out in the middle of the night, it could make things hell on you. So build a shelter. The second thing I would do is build a fire. Uh, hopefully you have matches with you. Go gather wood. Gather as much wood as you possibly can. It'll keep you busy and, and keep that fire going. You don't want to be searching uh, for wood out in the middle of the night. The last thing that I want to say is you need to find water. Hopefully, uh, you have a means to boil it. But if you don't, um, drinking out of a fast-moving stream, probably your best bet. Try to stay away from a pond if you don't have any way to boil your water because you could get sick, and getting sick and lost is nowhere that you want to be. Let's talk about getting hungry. You know what? You're just pretty much going to be hungry. If you're not an accomplished outdoors person and you can't see uh, what, what berry is poisonous and what berry is not, you probably don't want to be eating anything. Uh, it's just very important that you don't get sick or poisoned from something that you eat because you're hungry. That's why having a day pack is super important because at least you have a few comforts, including fire, including a way to uh, uh, purify water that will keep you healthy and give you an um, amount of comfort uh, in this trying and very stressful time. <laughs>
Okay, there you go. What happens when you're lost in the woods? I'm the rhino. Mr. Muskies 101. Please subscribe. Are you prepared to come and look for me? I want my mom.